Hey friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma LaFave and today we are recapping 2021. A list of my favorite artists, challenges, series that I did, supplies that I found, supplies that I loved, and big things that happened this year. So we did this video last year of my favorites. It was a lot of fun to look back, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. So let's jump right in and start. Okay, so to start by kicking off these lists, we're gonna go through my favorite supplies that I discovered this year or were given to me. I'm gonna be honest, one of the major perks about being on YouTube and doing this job is that I get some amazing brands that reach out to me to ask if I wanna try their stuff. I also honestly get some that are not so great, but I don't share them with you because I don't feel it's necessary to waste energy or a video on bashing a product that I don't recommend. Um, unless it's like maybe a big name that is selling a lot, but I, I still haven't even done that. I'd rather just share products with you guys that I absolutely love. So the first one on my list are these Paul Rubens watercolors that they sent me. They sent me the metallic ones too. I'm not as big of a fan as metallic paints, but I was really impressed with this watercolor pan set. So I think this was the first pan set I actually really tried. So as most of you know, I'm a tube kind of girl. <laughs> I have always bought the Winsor & Newton tubes and I even tried, oh actually no, so I have tried the Winsor & Newton Cotman pan set. I actually wasn't a big fan of that. I think I have a review on it from a couple years ago. Wasn't my favorite, but I was actually really pleasantly surprised with the Paul Rubens watercolor set. Um, the colors are just great, great array of colors. Um, and the quality is pretty good too, and they're light fast. So I was very happy um, to receive these and work with them. So this is my first choice for some of my favorite supplies. My second favorite are beam watercolors. So actually a few of these are watercolors, which I was impressed with, because I'm kind of a creature of habits where I, you know, I, I stick to what I know and what I like. And Winsor Newton have, has been that for me for so long. But I found a few watercolors that I actually really liked and so the Paul Rubens ones, but also the beam ones. So they are light fast. I did a light fast test on them. Some people say that you have to test it over a few years. I'm not gonna do that. Um, but over a few months in the sun, they did great. Um, but outside of the quality, they're just so stinking cute. I like, I love naturey things. I also love that it's a female indigenous company who makes these um, and their packaging is zero waste. So I always thought that was incredible. And I just, the minute I saw these, I was like, oh my God, I have to have them. And they're amazing watercolors. So I have this palette. Um, she sent me this one. And I also have this gouache palette. And I honestly love all of them. I like to take them traveling and they just, they make me happy to use. And I think that is important in a product. It doesn't always have to be about quality or, you know, price or whatever, but just if something makes you happy to use it, I think that's a plus and I was so pleasantly surprised with these and just I'm happy to have them. So this is my second choice for favorite supplies this year. Another thing that I found this year that is super cool, I haven't used it all that much, but I just think it's pretty incredible is the Daniel Smith watercolor ground. So if you haven't seen the video, go watch it. Basically what this stuff is, it's kind of like a paste and you can add this to any surface, wood, glass, what, whatever, um, even a canvas, and it turns it basically into a watercolor surface. It's like watercolor paper once it fully dries. And it just kind of opened up so many doors. Um, I really like making like little wooden gift tags and stuff like that for Christmas or ornaments. And I always did it with acrylic, but this allows me to do it with watercolor. And I just think that's super incredible. I think I need to um, you just test this out a bit more. I do have the transparent kind, which I actually haven't used yet. So I think I need to give that a go too, but I was so impressed with this. I think this is just like one of the coolest things, but I definitely need to use it more. Another supply that you could say was pretty impactful this year in my life was receiving the Craftimo bamboo brushes. So I feel like it was back in February or March. I have to look it up, <laughs> um, but they sent me their pack of, what was it, eight or 10? Um, bamboo craft and moat brushes and I fell in love and that became the start of a beautiful partnership 
And we created Emma Lefebvre brushes. I loved their stuff so much. They sent it to me. My husband actually got an email from them saying, hey, we'd like to send you brushes. My husband was like, yeah. He didn't even tell me until it came. He's like, oh, I got you these brushes. A company reached out and I was like, oh, okay. And I had honestly tried a few other products that I was just not fond of at the time. And I tried them and I was like, I really like these brushes. They were awesome. And then the video did well. A lot of people either purchased them, they love them. And then we just decided to collaborate and that was huge. So this led to wonderful things this year, which we'll also talk about in some big things that happened. But I really do love the bamboo brushes and even more so I love the Emma Lefebvre brushes. So I'm just gonna throw that out there. Just a side note, second release of my Emma Lefebvre Craft Mo brushes are coming out on December 26th, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Just a little plug there. Other supplies that I discovered this year that I was very impressed with was some new watercolor cotton paper that I hadn't used before. And I've always gone for Arches watercolor paper, but during my testing out seven different types of 100% cotton watercolor paper, I found three that I actually really like that I will buy again. So the first one is Academy watercolor paper. Originally I bought the huge block, it's back there, but I didn't wanna take it out. Um, it's pretty great paper. This I got from Stationery Pals, this small little one, um, but it's very affordable and it's wonderful paper. I really, really enjoy it. Um, and this comes in a block, so it's pretty cool. And I think the larger block, when I bought it off Amazon, came with this, which is like a little cutter kind of thing to get it off the block, which is great. So I really recommend this, love this paper. Definitely buy it again when I run out. The second paper I really liked was the Paul Rubens 100% cotton paper. Also really good, it's a block. Was very impressed with this. So that was a nice find. And then lastly was the Canson Heritage series um, paper that I have seen people use and heard people use, but I had never been able to find it. And then luckily I found it on Amazon. Um, I feel like they all range around 30-ish dollars Canadian, um, but they weren't too expensive. I can still find arches at some independent stores, a little stores, um, stores a little cheaper, but, and it's still one of my favorites, but these were also a very pleasant surprise um, doing that video and definitely paper that I love and I will be using again. Okay, so also this was the year that I tried some handmade watercolors. The beam watercolors are handmade, um, but I was able to try some KMS watercolors. She has her little own independent shop and I feel like these are like, really like handmade. It's like a small little shop that she's actually um, expanded into a website now. Um, she has tons, but excuse the mess. <laughs> but they're actually, I don't really use them too often, but they smell so amazing. Um, and I will pull them out every now and then. And I was just really impressed for handmade watercolors. I tend to use this metallic um, sample card very often. It's just so portable and easy and they don't fall out and they're like beautiful metallic colors. So I, I think I use this a lot more often than I use this just cause I usually use my Windsor Newton, but for an independent kind of small business, I was actually really impressed with these. I will link her website down below as well. Another thing I tried this year that I actually, I'm not impressed with it. I didn't love it, but it was something new and interesting that I didn't know existed was a watercolor canvas. So, this was part of a, a video of testing it out and um, comparing it to paper. And it was interesting to use. So it's not a supply that I was like, would recommend that you do all your watercolors on, but I didn't know it existed because usually you can't paint on canvas with watercolor, but they have these specific ones. And I thought that was pretty cool to have. So if you like painting on canvas, this might be something for you to try. Definitely check out the video to just get a little bit more of a feel of how it works, but it was, it was pretty interesting. And then lastly, the other thing that I tried for the first time that took a little bit of time to like, but I actually do like them, are the Faber-Castell watercolor pencils. So like I said before in the video when I was testing them out, they just seemed like an unnecessary next, next, next step, extra step to painting with watercolor that I just, I didn't feel the need to do. Um, but the more I kind of used them and played around with them and like doing those little gnomes um, for Christmas that I did, I really enjoyed it. So I think for illustration, it's a lot more fun and I might pull them out a bit more. For florals, I'm not a fan, 
but it does give a certain texture to your paper that watercolor on its own doesn't. So I could definitely appreciate these and they were fun to use. Okay, so those were all my favorite supplies of 2021. I got to try out a bunch of awesome stuff and fell in love with a few of them and it's super cool to try. So that is that list. So now I'm gonna talk about my favorite artists that I found this year or got to know a bit better and definitely recommend you checking out. The first one is Jessica Seabock. If you haven't seen my interview with her, I, interv I interviewed her on my channel a few weeks ago actually and we got to chatting and it was just so much fun. She's an incredible artist, a portrait artist and she does these scribble collabs with her son and just chatting with her like mom to mom, artist to artist was a lot of fun. Um, and I definitely suggest you check her out and the interview. The second artist that I really enjoyed this year was Harriet DeWinton. Um, I think I followed her previously, but I wasn't, I didn't know she had a YouTube channel and she messaged me one day and we got to talking a bit and I really like dove a little bit deeper into her channel and her Instagram. And she is like an incredible, incredible artist. She has amazing videos. Um, and she's just, she's just wonderful. So I really enjoyed watching some of her stuff this year, looking at her Instagram and all her beautiful artwork. Definitely check her out. I think it's DeWinton Paper Co. Um, if you want to follow her, I will also add that below in the description, but she's an incredible artist and I definitely suggest you check her out. And then lastly, number three is Dana Fox. She sent me her book and her brushes this year. I think I had been following her, um, Dana Fox from Wonder Forest previously, but again, kind of like Harriet, I just, I, I wasn't into scrolling too much on Instagram and I was just kind of trying to provide more content. But the more I kind of got to, you know, looking into them more, she has also has a YouTube channel and her book was amazing. I really enjoyed that and I enjoy, enjoyed painting in there. Um, her brushes are absolutely stunning. Like they are just so beautiful. They're just so beautiful and I do use them um, at times as well. She has some great products. Her paper is really, really good too. I got the block of her paper or the paper pad as well as a sketchbook. Her products are top notch and she's Canadian. So extra love for her, but I really enjoy getting to know her a bit better this year and looking at more of her work. So I definitely suggest you, you check her out as well. So those are the three artists that I really, really enjoy getting to know this year. Like I said, check them out and I guarantee that you will love them as well. Okay, so now let's dive into some of the videos we did this year, specifically more the series that I did this year. I tend to do like little series here and there and some of them actually did well and I enjoyed doing. So the first one was my watercolor drills. It hadn't occurred to me that this might be useful, um, but it seemed to be useful. So I really enjoyed kind of breaking each part down for you guys and creating videos around that. That was a lot of fun and you guys seem to like it too. So if there's any more kind of drills or anything you can think of that you want me to add to that, please let me know. My brain's not completely working all the time. <laughs> so if you guys want to suggest a couple things here and there, I will definitely get on that. The other series I did, which I did not finish, um, was the bullet journal series. I started bullet journaling this year. And it was going well, I was enjoying it because I do use a planner um, for all of my videos and just like organizing and all that stuff. So it was very helpful. But the moment I started getting morning, morning sickness, all day sickness, um, when I got pregnant, I, I just could not do it anymore. I just kind of gave up. So like September, I just stopped, wasn't into it anymore. It was fun to do, but I just took a lot of time and I just was not feeling it. So the bullet journal series kind of tanked after a while, um, but it was it was fun to try out. I don't think I'm gonna do a bullet journal again this year. I actually got a, a pre-made planner because I don't have time for that. <laughs> Another series I did this year was the Watercolor for Beginner series. I, again, broke down all the basics from the absolute beginning. And I think you guys also seem to like it, which was a lot of fun. And like I said, if there's any more that you want me to clarify with beginner stuff for watercolor, please let me know. I will definitely do videos on them. Just need you guys to tell me what you need. And then lastly, another series that I did, which was fun, was the color matching series, was taking objects from around my house, like some food or my son's toys and color matching them with using only four watercolors. I love color mixing and color matching and it was super fun. 
Um, so if you want to see more of that, let me know. So this year, I also tried out a bunch of different painting challenges, which I hadn't done before. And they were actually a lot of fun. One of my favorite ones was I was like in a total video slump. I was feeling so unmotivated. And my husband just said, why don't you go and find something around the house that's not paint to paint with? And I was like, you know what? Let's do it. <laughs> so I went into my spice cabinet and I painted with spices and like coffee and tea. And it actually turned out pretty decent. Like it was a lot of fun. So it was just something for me to step out of my box, my comfort zone um, and try. And it was actually a lot of fun and it was a challenge, but it was a pleasant surprise. Another challenge that I did this year was painting things I was scared to try, which ended up being more painting animals. <laughs> Still don't like painting animals. Still don't like it, but I'm glad I did it. I think I painted a horse, I painted a hedgehog, um, something else, penguin, koala. They were okay, they were cute. Still, it wasn't that much fun, I'm gonna be honest. I did not like stepping out of my comfort zone with that and painting those, but I did, and it was a challenge, and it went all right. Another challenge I did was painting on my sketchbook covers. So my Etcher Lab sketchbooks that I absolutely adore have a canvas cover and I painted on two of them, I believe, one with watercolor, one with acrylic, and those turned out quite well. So just a little refresh, here was the acrylic one, which I actually really enjoyed painting on. Um, I just painted with white acrylic first and then did other acrylic over. It ended up super, super nice. I was so impressed with myself. <laughs> I, I hate to admit it, but I was, and it was a lot of fun and just something to kind of spruce up your, your notebooks or your sketchbooks. That was, I still have room to paint on the back of this one. And then I did this one with watercolor, which again, turned out pretty decent. Not gonna lie. I think I just did the back of those like that, but yeah, that was super fun. And that was a challenge, something I didn't think I could do. And I really enjoyed these. And now I have some fun pieces that I can, you know, display if I wanted to on my shelf um, or just have like as a keepsake with all of my art inside. Let me know if you wanna see another custom sketchbook cover painting. Cause that looking at again, it, I'm actually more impressed I think now than I was at the time. I actually really like those. So if you'd like me to see, if you'd like to see me do another one, let me know. And then my last challenge video that I actually really enjoyed and was surprised with um, was the time challenge. So I painted florals in 10 minutes, one minute, and then 10 seconds. And I was really surprised with myself because the 10 minute one, I just had too much time and I was overthinking it. Didn't really love it. And then the 10 sec, no, the one minute one was actually pretty decent. Like it was super loose. And good. The 10 second one was awful. But the one minute one was cool and it was just something fun to do. So I definitely suggest you give yourself more challenges because it's good to step out of your comfort zone and try new things even if you don't end up liking it. So there's the list of that. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about some videos that I actually really love doing. Last year I did talk about some videos that I didn't like doing or cared for and I looked back through my list and there wasn't anything I was like, ugh, no. Um, I don't love everything I do or most of the things I do. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. I don't love it, most of the things I do, but I didn't really hate anything this year. So I'm not gonna do that list, but I will talk about the videos that I love doing this year. My first one is painting with my husband. How many times did I do that? Did I do that twice this year? I can't remember. No, he did one on his own, which I loved watching. Um, and then we did one live date night together, which we will do again. He has already said he's on board to do it again, but it was just something nice that him and I could do together, chat with you guys live and the paintings turned out really well. And he, he didn't love it. It's not like he fell in love with watercolor after that. It's not his jam, but he did it and he did a great job. And it was just fun to kind of do something with him together something that I love. So I really love shooting that video and there's definitely more of those videos to come. He's such a trooper. Another video that I really enjoyed doing this year were my real talk videos. I think I have two or three of those where I just kind of had footage of me painting. Um, one was a butterfly, one was me painting by the lake, but it was just kind of opening up my brain <laughs> to you guys and how I had been feeling 
and like imposter syndrome, just a bunch of stuff and just working on perfection, perfectionism. That's the word, right? Yes. Um, and it was just kind of nice to just kind of let all of that jumbled thoughts of messiness and self-doubt kind of spew out into videos. So it was nice kind of just being real and talking with you guys because I needed to get it out because there's, there's more times than not that I'm actually feeling those feelings. And I feel like with social media, you look at people that you idolize or look up to and they just all seem like they have it together at all the time, at all the time. I can't speak for the life of me. They all seem like they have it together all the time and most of them don't. And even I look at other artists that I admire and I go, oh, they have such great lives. They're doing so amazing. They probably never screw up. And so I just wanted to kind of let you know from where I am of how I feel about things. So I hope those videos were helpful because I did enjoy doing them and maybe I'll do some more in the future if you guys are interested. Another video I actually loved doing this year, which I only did one and I meant to do another and then I was pregnant and I, I am pregnant and I was super sick and I just could not bring myself to do it because it was just too much, but I am gonna do it again, was helping you with your watercolor struggles. So I had people send in photos of their artwork to me on Instagram um, and I'm gonna do this again. And they told me what they didn't like about their painting and asked how they would fix it. So disclaimer, I don't tell you what I think you need to fix or what you did wrong because I don't think that's my place. I don't think anyone does anything wrong because your vision could look completely different than my vision. But if you have questions of your artwork saying, why are there blooms here? I don't understand why this happened or how can I get it to blend out better? I love helping with that stuff. So I'm gonna definitely do that again. That was a fun video to do. So if you want to enter your artwork when I decide to do that video again, follow me on Instagram because it's really great to connect with me there. That's where I connect with people through messages, not as much through comments on YouTube. There's just too many, but Instagram, that's where I do all that stuff. So I will definitely do that one again. Another video that I really loved doing this year was the seven bad habits of watercolor that you should never do. Um, it ended up being a video of me just confessing all the bad habits that I do and telling you it's okay if you do them too. And it ended up doing really well. I didn't think it was going to. I just just spewed out a bunch of watercolor rules. Some that I follow and some that are important and some that I ignore. And I just thought it was fun to be silly and goofy and hopefully helpful. So that was a video I enjoyed doing. And then last one, an actual painting video that I liked doing the outcome were these snowy trees. I thought they turned out beautifully. That's one I think I'm proud of. Um, it's funny, the actual tutorial wasn't as good as my practice run. One day I just decided to paint these snowy trees. They were in my sketchbook and then I was like, Dah. I gotta do a video on this. So I did a video and they turned out good and I, I love them, but I like the ones that were in my sketchbook better. Either way though, I, I was actually proud of that one and I enjoyed doing it. So I'm probably gonna do some more of those again. Okay, and then for my absolute last list of favorite things of 2021, my big things that happened this year, just big favorite things that happened this year that I wanna share, which I've already shared, but I'm gonna share them again. The first one, I have my own brush line. I mean, you guys know that, but like that happened. Like that was like a dream kind of. Um, I remember when we first started to craft, started talking to Craftimo about them and I was just like, oh my gosh, that is insane. So that was huge. And I love that they're, they're coming out on the 26th, another plug, um, second round. And it was just fun creating a product or helping create a product and collaborate with a company that I really, really enjoy. Um, the stuff that they create and you know, putting my artwork on it, my name on it, and just sharing it with you guys. So I was, I'm still kind of shocked that that's a thing, that people are gonna have my brushes for years to come. So that was a really big thing that happened this year that I'm very, very happy about. Another thing that happened this year that you may not know about and is still in the works, I am currently writing a watercolor how-to book. So I've gotten together with a publisher and an editor and I have, it, it will hopefully come out next year, probably the end of next year, so a, a year-ish from now. Um, but this whole year I've been writing and illustrating for 
an instructional book. So if you've seen my books on Etsy, my little booklets, the digital downloads, it's going to be like that, but an actual book. So that's what I've been working on. I'm a little overwhelmed because my manuscript is due same time as the babies do. So that's a little overwhelming and I really got to crunch down and kind of get it done, <laughs> but it's happening. And this is one of my biggest dreams. It's been a dream of mine my whole life to write a book, not a watercolor book necessarily, but just write a book and have my book in my hands. So that's a huge thing that I'm really looking forward to next year that will hopefully be on next year's favorites of 2022 list of things that just happened. So look out for that. Another big thing that happened only a few months ago was Patreon. I launched my Patreon and it's doing pretty well. So if you're interested in getting my videos, all my YouTube videos ad free for as little as $3 a month, or getting some extra perks of extra tutorials that are not on YouTube, extra printables of some of my artwork, some worksheets and all that stuff for the higher tiers, um, and also an extra live video that I do, definitely check that out. Um, my Patreon is linked below. And then lastly, the biggest news of all this year, I'm having a baby boy. <laughs> I am currently right now 22 weeks pregnant, 22, 23 almost. I don't have much time left and I'm due in April with my second little boy and it is very exciting, very overwhelming, very terrifying <laughs> the thought of two children, but I am so excited to hold this little baby in my hands and see Noah with him and see Matt with him and just becoming a family of four. It's kind of bananas to me. So that is my last favorite big thing that happened this year. So like I said, a lot of great things came out of this year. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this channel. Um, I really try my best to give you guys content that you want. Please let me know in the comments below any of your favorites or things you want to see from me in 2022. I could always use more ideas. Let me know if you want more beginner friendly tutorials or more instructional stuff or more product reviews or me to just shut up and paint. I don't know. Honestly, let me know what you guys want to see because I am catering this to you. So please share what you would like to see so I can get on that and start making some more incredible content for you this upcoming year. Thank you guys for being such an incredible support to me. Honestly, the fact that this is my job still blows my mind and I'm so incredibly grateful for every single one of you and the support and love that you guys give me all the time. So thank you for being such a great part of my life and I'm just so thankful. So have a wonderful holiday. I will see you with some more videos soon and that's about it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for even more. Have a great day guys. Bye.